My name is Dashi Kim Gibson. I'm a Korean American filmmaker. I do a few other things too. I enjoy putting my memories on canvas. I was born in North Korea. I've lived in America for half a century as a naturalized citizen, married to an Iowa farm boy turned historian. Don grew up on Iowa soil, and I in a North Korean town. But we both loved the sky. On a cold winter morning in 2009, I lost Don, my soulmate, my home. Until the day he died, Don remained a man of the sky, the sky that embraces all people everywhere. Alone in America, I ask, where is my home now? Could it be the place of my birth, North Korea? I wanted to understand why I left home in the first place. I talked to Dr. Charles Armstrong, a professor of history at Columbia University who was born in South Korea but grew up in America. Now married to a Korean-Canadian with two lovely daughters, he is a happy family man as well as one of the best-known North Korean experts in America. Growing up in the U.S., if you saw images of North Koreans at all, it was very negative. And it got me thinking about how is it that Korea became divided? Why is there a place called South Korea and a place called North Korea that, that don't have any interaction with each, with each other? How did that happen? The division of Korea was mm -hmm. an American idea at the end of World War II to deal with the surrender of Japan. Japan had lost the war, and Korea was a colony of Japan. So the Japanese were going to have to leave Korea, but the question is, what would happen to Korea afterward? No Koreans were consulted. The Americans thought the Korean people were not advanced enough, or you might say not civilized enough, to really run their own country without outsiders to help them. But the, the Russians were going to obviously come in. They were right there on the border with North Korea. And the Americans did not want Russia to take over all of Korea because it was clear, even at the end of World War II, that the Soviet Union was going to be a, an adversary of the U.S. after the war. So the American proposal was to divide Korea into, two, into a north and south occupation zone. And this would be a temporary joint occupation uh, leading towards some sort of uh, solution for an independent Korea. The division is still on. At age 75, I decided to go back to find out whether I would feel at home there. On my flight from New York to Seoul, I remembered my happy childhood in Shincheon, my hometown. An image of my grandmother came. She and I sitting on our open veranda and grandma peeling apples for me. Mm. 
My maternal grandmother rests here, on the outskirts of Seoul, South Korea. I was seven years old. <laughs> Almost there. My grandmother lived with us in the South until her death in 1959. Before she closed her eyes, we promised her that someday we would take her to our family mountain in North Korea so she could be home by her husband's side. But my grandmother still waits. I remembered my grandmother comforting me after a painful incident during the final days of Japanese colonial rule. In the spring of 1945, I was playing with my elementary school friends when my Japanese teacher grabbed my arm and jerked me to my feet. You are speaking Korean, she said. Of course, I said, fearful, but with pride. She ordered me to stretch my arms upward like a surrendering soldier and to repent. Memories of August 15, 1945 came flooding back. I listened to the trembling voice of Emperor Hirohito over the radio with my family. I remember this day not because of the surrender, but because that's when Korea gained independence from Japan. The day of declaration that no teacher could ever punish me for speaking Korean again. Now, it was the Japanese who were surrendering. I remember people shouting, Manse! Manse! Victory! Victory! I now invite the representatives to sign the instrument of surrender at the places indicated. The joy did not last long. Korea was divided at the 38th parallel. Russians occupied the north, Americans the south. After the division, our neighbors and friends suddenly felt compelled to choose where to live, north or south. My father told me that he chose the South because he loved democracy and the Americans. That's why we left home, crossing over what the grown-ups called the 38th parallel. I felt deeply split inside, as young as I was. Why the division? Why do I have to leave my Gohyang, the place where I was born, and grew up happy. In Seoul, just like in the north, spring came and clothed winter trees, leafy and brilliant, and then summer, autumn, and winter again. But for a long while, Life in the South was never the same. <laughs> <laughs> 
as my childhood home in the north. I continue the conversation with more experts in South Korea. 미국이 거의 한 80% 책임이라고 봅니다. 음, 음. 그 다음에 소련도 한 10% 정도. 그 다음에 친일파. 아니 그 당시에 해야죠. 조선 사람 누구도 분단을 원하는 사람은 없었을 거예요. 네. 그렇지만 일본에 있었죠. 결과적으로 우리가 우리 힘으로서 독립을 쟁취하지 못했기 때문에 거기서부터 그러한 미국의 무지 또 소련의 또 그야말로 강압 이런 것들이 서로 작용하면서 분단이 된 거죠. was a city of roughly two and a half million people when I left South Korea 50 years ago. Now over 10 million people live here and it is one of the most modern and densely populated cities in the world, famous for its conspicuous consumption. So many questions to raise here, such as what South Koreans think about Korean unification and how they feel about American soldiers still being here. Hmm. 아, 걔들이 지금 무슨 저뭐 전쟁이나 뭐 이런 항공 모함이나 뭐 이런 거 갖다가 놓고선 지금 전쟁 준비를 하고 있는 거냐 음, 맨날 음. 싸울 준비를 하고. 음. 아, 그러니 북한에선 가만히 있어 걔들은 다 죽을 방을 하고 있는 거라고 지금. 지금 내가 생각하기에는 미국이 떠나야 돼요. 우리나라를 떠나야 돼요. I will soon be going to North Korea, but as long as I had to stop in Seoul, I should explore what is going on here. South Korea is an essential element in understanding North.
거울까? 뭐가 올까? 어떤 현상이 올까? 네. 좋습니다. 어, 네, 저 머리 스타일 너무 마음에 들어요. 아, 땡큐. 여기 쪽 가면 길이 나와요? 네. 북한에 대해서 뭘 어떻게 생각해요? 다 같이 똑같은 사람을 생각해요. 똑같은 사람? 통일을 원하세요? 통일을 원해야죠. 왜 원해야 돼요? 통일 없이 지금 반세기가 넘게 이긴 세월 살았는데. 그렇게 사는 게 원래 도, 독일처럼 통일이 돼야죠. 음. 어, so as long as you are here, they, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. They understand that if they attack South Korea, that mm -hmm. the United America. States is allies for mm -hmm. them, and they're going to have a war with America, and they don't want that. 1945, 주한미군이 올해 67년입니다. 우리 역사에서 음. 이렇게 오래 외국군이 주둔한 적이 있느냐라는 음. 거죠. 음. 제일 오래 주둔한 게 일본인데 일본의 한배 반을 이미 넘었습니다. The U.S. had this idea that they would come in and they would support a kind of middle-of-the-road political force. But as is often the case, such a force didn't really exist in Korea. And in fact, they ended up supporting the more, uh, in some case, extremely conservative elements in South Korean society who, as they came to power, began to severely repress any kind of criticism, any kind of political movement that could be possibly portrayed as leftist or pro-communist. And it, by 1947, it became extremely brutal, and many, many people were being killed in South Korea. That was a time uh, throughout uh, East and Southeast Asia uh, where 80, 90 percent uh, of the people, whether in Korea, China, or Vietnam, were peasants, uh, most of them illiterate. and. Uh, a real anti-colonial, anti-imperial revolution was sweeping Korea, China, and, and Vietnam. And the U.S. Uh, decided to stand in the way of uh, consummating that revolution in Korea. But what the Russians did in the North was different. The Russian army was destroyed and was destroyed. The Russian army was destroyed. The Russian army was destroyed. 조선이 해방된 것은 시작이니까 이제부터 조선이 어떤 나라로 되는가 하는 건 조선이 민에게 달려 있다. 아. 당신의 재강껏 아름다운 나라를 건설해 봐라. When I was 10 years old, I saw long lines of people in the streets of Seoul. My teacher told me that they were there for elections. I later learned that the elections were supported by the United 
Nations and the U.S. and gave birth to the National Assembly in the South. That same year, 1948, on August 15, the Republic of Korea was born with Seung Man Ri, then the head of the Assembly as president. At that point, I had no real feelings about Seung Man Ri. The only thing that stood out was his wife. She was an Austrian, a funny-looking foreigner. The U.S. helped to set up the Seung Man Ri government. Singh and Rhee had been in the United States for 35 years uh, as an exile. And that government was more an American creation than any other in East Asia. 그러니까 이 사회주의로 나아가는 게그 당시 여론 조사를 보면은 최소한도 한 75% 이상, 80% 가까이가 사회주의를 원했으니 남북한 주민들 다 그러니까 이게 미국이나 소련이나 개입해서 분단을 시키지 않고 외세가 개입하지 않았더라면은 남쪽이든 북쪽이든 사회주의가 되죠. The left was very much seen as a threat to Sigmund Rhee. Communism became a kind of code for anybody who whom the Rhee regime didn't like or who could possibly be seen as critical or undermining his authority. So there was a massive suppression of any kind of uh, independent political activity and uh, outright murder of people who were considered to be communists. Tens of thousands of people were killed, executed, accused of being communist. The North Koreans argued that because of the, the political suppression in the South, the mm -hmm. fact that the communists were outlawed and that the, much of the left had been, uh, had been shunted uh, aside and could not participate, that the elections in the South really weren't fair. They held their own election. That election led to the creation of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea with Kim Il-sung as the top leader. Mm -hmm. 친일파 민족 반역자들이 지지하여서 우리 3천만 민족을 분열하고 He was quite young. He was 33 when Korea was liberated. He had a reputation of a patriot, an anti-Japanese fighter. He was a Korean nationalist first and foremost. That was his primary focus. That's what he mainly talked about. Not communism, not being part of an international socialist movement or the Soviet Union, but uh, leading an independent and free Korea, and that's what attracted people to him. Hwang <laughs> so Gyeong is one of South Korea's most celebrated authors. In 1989, he made an unauthorized visit to North Korea to explore how to overcome the division of the Korean Peninsula. The trip violated South Korea's national security law. Hwang was sentenced to seven years in prison when he returned home to the South. But he was released after five years, pardoned by the newly elected President Kim Dae-jung. Mm. Inminderlobotanango, uh, 
그런 그 나이 든 사람이 이렇게 나를 안았다 하는 게 음. 어, 대단히 그 느낌이 달랐습니다. 그래서 음. 어, 네. 그 어, 제가 볼때 제가 가서 볼 때는 거기는 저 어버이 체제라고 그래요. 그러니까 김일성이라는 네. 사람을 네. 아버지로 해서 그래갖고 온전 인민을 이제 그런 그 가족적 테두리에다가 이렇게 넣어서 네. 이렇게 통치를 하는 음. 그런 느낌이죠. 그러니까 어, 억압이 있어도 참아야 되고 음. <웃음> 그, 그렇죠? 음. 그 이제 사람이 이제 카리스마라는 게 있잖아요. 예, 그러니까 예. 어, 그 카리스마가 있죠. 음. 그런데 하여튼 어, 한 50여 년 반세기 동안 우리 저 어, 한반도의 절반을 통치했던 음. 사람이니까 예, 예. 예, 그러니까 한 느낌이 어, 남다를 수밖에 없죠. 상대가 음. 또 그런 사람이니까. 음. 예. 또 달리 이제 뭐 적에 대해서 얘기할 때나 또는 자기가 좀 음, 생각이 다른 입장 그 사상이 다른 입장에 대해서 이렇게 비판적으로 얘기할 때 보면 음. 눈이 아주 그 눈매가 매서워서 예, 어떤 사람은 어, 범의 눈 같다 뭐 이렇게 표현을 했는데 제가 보기에는 그 눈이 굉장히 냉혹하게 보이더군요 그 그때의 눈빛이. 김일성died인1994.His son,김종일,took over.In2011,김일성's grandson,김종은,succeeded.North Korea is now the only communist nation in history where power has been handed down through three generations.I try to understand this. I think that North Koreans need a strong rock to cling to in order not to be blown away by the fierce winds from outside. But I believe leaders should be elected. 안녕하세요. Government guides accompanied me. Sometimes there was one guide, other times two, plus a government-supplied cameraman. I was free to tell the guides what I would like to film, but my wishes were not always granted. Oh. <laughs> 우리 한민족이 북으로 남으로 갈라져서 서로 휘어져 살지 않습니까? 네, 네. 서로 형제들끼리도 갈라져서 사는 사람들이 많지 않습니까? 네, 네. 어, 형은 북에서 살고 동생은 남에서 살고 반성이 음, 많이 음. 서로 만나서 음, 반가운 감정이 음. 더 컸지 음. 차이점을 더 크게 봤습니까? 네. 선생님 처음 네. 보지 않습니까? 네. 선생님도 네. 저도 처음 보고 네. 네. 하지만 저 선생님 남남으로 생각 안 한단 말입니다. 그럼 내가 누구예요? 할머니를 생각합니다. 아이, 할머니가 뭐야? 어머니쯤 해줘야지. 그렇습니까? <웃음> 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 <웃음>
It was clear that my guides had definite ideas where I should go and whom I should meet. I confess I was not keen about visiting all the monuments. There were so many of them. That cold marble hardened my heart. Finally, my guide took me to an amusement park. I couldn't wait to meet all those people, especially the kids. But my guide cautioned me to be careful. Warning, you might scare them off with your hairstyle. あ、いぶんいぶんはんぼぎぶしょっさ。あいうちまえ。あ、あんねおん。はしっぽよ、はんぼぎ。うん。おお。やぎすなんぼわんはっけだにしのぶんでりぐな。くじょ。なんぼわ
a form of pantheism. This teaching that all people are equal with God elevated common people and gave birth to the Dongak teaching, people are the sky. Even towards the guide, deep down, I had no negative feelings. He and I came from the same stock. Sadness passed through me, thinking about the small peninsula of the same race, how the country was divided and the people of one blood became enemies. The divided country made me feel split inside. I wondered if the guide felt split as well. I remember the war we call Yu-Gi-Oh! June 25, 1950. It was Sunday morning. We were gathered in our living room getting ready to go to church. My father rushed in. The North Korean bread bastards had invaded the South. His voice shook as he said, North Korean bastards! <laughs> Debate will continue whether it was North or South Korea that started the war. But recently discovered documents seem to confirm that it was the North to unify the country. Only three days after the war began, Seoul was in the hands of the enemy. Our family walked to the Han River to find safety farther south. But the bridge tower escape was gone, blown up by withdrawing South Korean forces. I returned home with my mother and grandmother, but without father and my oldest brother, they had to flee. Father, because he had left the note and would be considered a traitor. And my brother, because he'd been involved in anti-communist activities at his university. Soon, Seoul became a war zone. Food and supplies were scarce. One morning, my mother summoned me to a room used for storage. She handed me a sack and told me to go to the market and fill it with rice. Just then, we heard a terrible sound as if the sky were falling down. Terror stricken, I grabbed my mother and we raced to the front of the house. Our house had been bombed. Actually, the entire neighborhood had been bombed. Early the next morning, I discovered the bodies of two of my friends on our stairway. I learned later that U.S. planes dropped those bombs supposedly to destroy a North Korean weapons site in our neighborhood. For the first time, my strong belief in the goodness of the Americans was shaken. During the war, North Korean soldiers were my enemies and American soldiers, my angels. Now I was among North Korean soldiers and felt as if I had found long-lost siblings. 
enemies turning into friends, childhood angels losing their wings in the eyes of a now old woman. Kim, Kim. Jong. Jong. Ha. Kim Jong Ha. Yeah. 어디세요? 함경북도. 함경북도. 길주군. CNA 함경북도. 그죠? Yeah. 함경북도가 세죠? 예. Yeah. Yeah. 그때 네. 10살입니다. 근데 그때 기분이 어땠어요? 그때 기분은 네. 조그만 시절이지만은 네. 네. 망고의 빨치산 김일선 장군님이 네? 조국을 찾아줬다는 거는 이미 전에 한경북도에 난리 알려져 있었습니다. 김일선 장군님을 그렸는데 네. 45년도에 해방되니까 아 김일선 장군님을 만나니까 아 정말 아버지 어머니를 만난 그 이상 기분이 없죠. 네, 그래서 그래도 목청껏 네. 김일선 장군 네. 만세. 네. 길에 나가서 만세했었어요. 네. 그렇기 때문에 우리 김일선 최고 사령관 동지께서는 일제의 백만군을 간동군을 때려부시고 그 길로 나와서 미제와 대결해서 온 세계 역사상에서 전자의 3일 만에 수도를 점령하는 건 유독 예, 우리 최고사령관 김일선 장군님이 지락에 의해서만 할수 있었습니다. 네, 그래서 서울에 갔더니 그때 응. 기분이 어땠어요? 기분이 응. 우리는 이랬구나. 네. 이? 미국 아들은 네. 전쟁 모든 이 수단들이 좋았단 말이오. 네. 그러나 네. 우리는 네. 창건된 지갓 이름밖에 나 아이디는 <웃음> 이래거든. 옹일에 해야 되겠다는 이 한마음을 하고 가지고 있었습니다. 네. 그러나 우리는 네. 실망하지 않습 네. 영명한 지도자 김일선 장군님이 있기 때문에 우리는 꼭 이긴다. 네. 아무리 양키가 네. 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 뭐 어찌고 어찌고 해도 네. 안 된다. 그래서요. 이거 안 되면 이거 나와야 돼. 여기. 선생님, 가십시다. 뒤로 가셨어? 응. 오케이. 네. 네. 这个人是一个人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的人的
After our house was bombed, we children went to the countryside with mother, away from dangers of the big city. My mother had had a large collection of silk in North Korea, saved for her children's marriages. In her bundle, mother packed what little silk she had managed to take with her to Seoul, and my mother traded the silk for rice. But the silk was coming to an end. No silk, no rice. His regime, he is acting according to the logic that he knows that works, having observed his father. If you look at long history of nuclear tension, I mean, they have a ground to really develop their nuclear weapons in a way to guard their sovereignty. Because, I mean, look what happened to Middle Eastern countries who gave up uh, nuclear projects. I mean, they were immediately facing, you know, threats. Um, so having observed all that, I think um, that gave North Korean leaders Kim Jong-il foundation to believe that nuclear development is a way to defend their national so uh, sovereignty. When you talk about the need for U.S. military bases in Korea and Japan, uh, missile defense, uh, for the United States. Can we really believe this is all directed against this little country of 25 million people, this poor and weak nation uh, is going to threaten the United States, the world's greatest power? The real threat is China, uh, as the Americans, I think, see it. Uh, but you can't, you can't say that because it would threaten this very delicate relationship with China. So North Korea becomes a convenient target. Are the human rights violations in North Korea the worst, as often claimed by many outside of North Korea? Is it important to know who is worse than whom in violating the human rights? Not for me. All human rights violations are fundamentally wrong and tragic. I felt as if Dan's Iowa sky met the Korean sky of Dongak, united in their common belief that if God is the sky, then the people are the sky too. Yeah. 
I asked my guides to introduce me to a family. I wanted to see how ordinary people live. They took me to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Kim, both textile workers. <웃음> 이야저사람이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이이
Korea was uh, relieved from Japanese colonialism, not because we fought directly with them, but as you know, that was the end of the Second World War, 1945. So Japanese surrendered, mm -hmm. and we got our country back. But um, the price of our country back was two superpowers came to Korea and divided our country. They could not make up their damn mind what to do. Soviet Union and USA, they both wanted to rule Korea. So what they did was, okay, let's divide it up. North belongs to Soviet Union, South belongs to USA. So there was what we now know famously, 38th parallel, Sanpasan. So when that happened, my father, who always believed that he was a very devout Democrat who believed in people's rights and uh, American democracy and all of that. So he had to leave North Korea. He did not want to live under the regime of Soviet Union. So one winter morning, I was eat, uh, sleeping really, really soundly. My grandmother came and shook me up and said, Dasha, get up, get up. Why? I'm sleepy. And she said, but you have to get up. So I got up, and then in front of me was put a bowl of steaming chicken soup. She said, you have to eat this, even if you don't want to eat, because we are going to walk a long way. I don't know when next you can eat. So eat it. And so she gave me chicken soup, all of rice, as I ate a little bit. And then we all had little package. We held each other's hand and we started walking because we were going to go to South Korea and we were going to walk all the way. If you think all the way, our home was in Shincheon, Hangedo. It's not too far actually. If you drive from Shincheon to um, Seoul, I mean, or gas on the part of uh, South Korea, it's probably two hour drive or something. It's very close. But for us, it's an enormous distance, you know. So we walked, walked, walked. And I remember walking holding my grandmother's hand. And it, once in the 38th parallel, in the thick of it, uh, Russian soldiers came and put their rifles in front of us and say, held up your hand. So we all held up like that. And then they all put us in a old barn. And we had to stay there for three days, you know. And um, But then they just look at us and so oh, that uh, we're all very harmless children and uh, all the people, my mother and father, already went to South Korea because uh, my father was worried that my mother would be in a dangerous position because the rumors were rampant that Soviet Union soldiers came and they raped a young woman. My mother was still in her 30s very beautiful woman, so he did not want to risk that. So he got a guide, and they came to Seoul, and they said it would be safer if an old woman, which is my maternal grandmother, and children came. So that's why we're just children and my grandmother crossing over the 38th parallel. And so we were in the pond, and uh, Russians said, they are harmless, just let them go. So we came to Seoul on foot. And I still remember that doing this as a little kid in front of Russian soldiers. That's how I came to Seoul. And uh, then my parents said, it's winter, and uh, you went to school one year younger than average age. You were seven years old because you wanted to go to school, you know, and just to make a commotion until we sent you to school. So you have one year to wait, so let's not hurry up. So 
I stayed home in in the winter time, and then when spring came, I went to uh, elementary school in our community. And people were, I'm just people. I I went and sat at the back, and I was introduced to my by the teacher. Said that that's that's Kim Dae-sil, 이북에서 올라온 학생이에요. 그래서 여러분이 친절하게 해주세요. My teacher said so. I sat there, and then they say, where were we? What were we doing? Students raised their hand. 우리 고급법 고급법 배우고 있지 않았어요. You know, 고급법 알죠? 고급법. 그래서 배우기 전에 이렇게 우리 어디 했었지? 그러니까 어떤 학생이 사단 사단 했었죠. 그래서 사단을 왜 했는데 남들어 대신 너 이거 아니 그랬니? I had no idea what the hell they were doing, you know. So I said, I couldn't even open my mouth. I was so ashamed. And uh, I did not know what was going on. But to make a long story short, uh, I came home and I told them what happened. And so my older brothers wrote out, E inen sa e samunyo, from second until the kuku pasimil, wrote the whole thing up. And they gave it to me. And uh, I was only seven, eight, eight years old. You know what? I sat with that chart all night. And when the morning came, it was not until four, sadankaji ga nida, kudankaji, I could just memorize the whole damn thing. I was so determined. And I was like that all my life, you know. When I put my mind to it and said, you have to do it, I did it. So the next day I went to school and my teacher said, can you do where we left yesterday? Can I do the whole thing? And her eyes went like that. And I said, I can do the whole thing from second to nine. And I did it. And so from that time on, the next year came, I became Hanjang, and I was Hanjang all the way through, and I went to school, and it was, a, I think my happiest time in my life was in elementary school days. Anyhow, 내가 다닌 학교가 표창, 표창공인 학교. 표창공은 아는 사람 있어요? 표창공원에 김구 선생님 거기, 그것도 있고, 사면사 때 있고, 다 그렇죠. 그래서, I have no idea why I'm saying all this. I came to USA to study. I came to USA to study. 1962년에 유학생, 더군다나 여자 유학생은 so rare. It was so rare. 근데 그때 오르다면은 국가 고시를 어, 국가에서 주는 시험을 패스해야 돼요. 그 시험이 뭐를 패스해야 되냐면은 you have to do English first, and then you have to know Korean history. English, I was very interested in it, so I worked with my textbook and then I worked the notebook all by myself so I still remember you know banana B A N A N A B O Y B O Y B O B O O K B O O K and I, I went to sleep and say mother M O T H E R father F A T H E R I learned English you know but um Kuksa, I did not know. So I asked someone to get me a tutor. So very nice young man was introduced to me. And he sat me down and he squeezed in the entire Korean history in a week. <laughs> really, so well. I wish I had that text with me today. So when I went to take the test, I passed with flying colors. But you know what? The teacher, who was my tutor. His name was Jung Yang Mo. 
he was a very young person then, but um, later when I went back to Korea, after that I got my PhD, I learned that he was Kungnik Pangmulgan Gwanjang, you know? Yeah. So he taught me Korean history. And so that's how I came to USA and spent all my years. And to come to USA and uh, become a teacher and to talk with the American public, uh, mainstream white people, students, and all of that. And I became a college teacher and all of that. And uh, I was so surprised how little they knew about our country, our history. Nothing. They, they knew a little bit that we were colonized by Japan. We were liberated in 1945 as a result of a, a life, the Second World War ending and blah, blah, blah. But they really did not know anything about Korea. And all they can think about is uh, Korean orphans, you know. And so the <coughs> men and the, the people came with the old blanket, worn out sweaters and things like that to help us out, and they just pissed me off, you know? <laughs> So I said to myself, when I have a chance, I really have to get some sense into these stupid people's head, <laughs> you know? And um, that's what I was always hoping, and uh, I taught college years, I was a bureaucrat for years, and all of that, and uh, I said to myself, it's time for me to do something to introduce North Korea because the way North Korea was introduced was as the story was told by defectors. Imagine that if you ran away from your home because your father beat you up, when somebody wanted you to tell the story why you ran away, what kind of story would you tell? You would say, my father was the greatest father in the world, you know, he was great, blah, blah, blah. You would say, oh, if I had the sight of him, I would love to kill him. You know, you can say all those mm -hmm. awful things. And that's what was happening about North Korea by defectors, because they left their country. And what they told these mainstream media people were only the bad things, as they thought, they experienced. So North Korea is a dark, dark, devilish country where no human beings can live. And uh, I, I interviewed those kind of people about 20 of them or so. That's the first thing I did when I started pre-production research. I came to South Korea and uh, look, looked for deep records and I wanted to get first-hand knowledge about North Korea. And that's what they all said. So after a while, I said, no, I can't do this. I cannot learn about North Korea through these people. I will only hear what they saw, which was bad. So I have to go myself and see with my own eyes, hear with my own ears. People who did not leave, who stayed there still. Mm -hmm. So that's how I went to North Korea. And that's what I brought back, and uh, don't think bad of me that I'm dragging myself, but I got some really, really good interviews at the park, on the street, in the house, and all of that. And the people that I bring you back, North Koreans, they are ordinary human beings who have their you know, sons and daughters and myanuri and, you know, they worry about where their grandsons will go to school and all of that. They're just not human beings like you and me. And sometimes we reach a humanity because they know the hardship. They're not that spoiled, you know? So they know how to think beyond themselves. The ordinary North Koreans were just wonderful. And that's what I try to show. So I don't go interview systematically. I grab people on the street, I grab people on the park, and just uh, talk. And they thought, many of the people that I interviewed like that, they, they thought I was cute. 
<laughs> you can see that I'm an old woman with gray hair, and my hair is now sort of tame, considering. <laughs> when I went to North Korea, it was like that. Manjuri. <laughs> you know? So one North Korean woman said, what are you doing with your hair? Wearing like Anjali. <laughs> so I said, well, I came to my hometown to see what it was like to come back home. Then they were so happy. They would yak, 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 laugh and laugh. And I had a hard time stopping them to talk. <laughs> you know? So that's well, how uh, my film was born. And that's what I wanted people here to see. And then you will see that there is a rich humanity living in North Korea, in spite of the tyrannical governing of the government and all of those things. And uh, their spirit is alive and well and stronger than many of us, maybe all of us. <laughs> yes. OK. Um, I, I noticed there were several times where you would be filming and they would stop you. Uh, were there any points that you had, or any memorable uh, stories that you had that they wouldn't let you film, but that you remember as really good, uh, good conversations or good interviews that you had? Uh, you know, I'm a filmmaker and every damn thing they tell me, I take it very preciously. Mm -hmm. If I had my way, I want to show you all the things that I shot, because to me, they are very valuable. Mm -hmm. But uh, this long, long footage, cutting into 90 minutes, that's the <laughs> hardest part of being a filmmaker, mm -hmm. you know? You have to cut what you like most. That's the editing process. Mm -hmm. If you decided, OK, I'll keep this, I'll keep this, I like this, I like this, you can never cut. Mm -hmm. So the rule is, start cutting the Start cutting the stuff that you like best, and be ruthless, you know. And that's how you make film, and uh, that's a very sad part. And uh, till this day, I'm swearing to myself that before I die, if I can get some time for myself and some funds somewhere, maybe I can go, you know, steal some from Trump or somebody, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, put all my footage in internet or some place so that people can, after I'm long gone, mm -hmm. uh, young, young, young people who want to know about North Korea go to the Library Congress mm -hmm. and go to their basement, start doing research, mm -hmm. and then this boy, I'm just imagining these things to his girlfriend, <laughs> look what I found! And show the footage I brought. Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> I dream like that, and I still live like that. Yeah. I don't know what question was, but you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there anything that you remember that you didn't get to put on film? That you like any kind of everything I just told you. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I don't mean in the film itself, but like recording that they wouldn't let you record, but that you talk to people. Anybody, anybody interesting that they said you couldn't, that it wasn't allowed to record, but someone that seemed interesting or something that well, was interesting Okay, to that, that um, makes me tell you, you know, every day there was, there was always guide following me or watching me. Sometimes there was one, sometimes there were two. They would stand by themselves sort of watching me like this, pretending that they're not really watching me, but they were. <laughs> And uh, I was just looking at them and pretending that uh, they didn't bother me. But uh, so they stand here, I stand here, and I see people passing by on the street. <coughs> and I would run so fast to the person and grab the person and start interviewing. <laughs> the guys, frightened and surprised, they come after me. <laughs> <laughs> they cannot stop because I'm talking, you know, happily with laughter with their citizens on the street. What would they say? You can't talk to her, to this grandma? Mm -hmm. So that's how I got my interviews. <laughs> and uh, many of the things that these people said were just, just great. I wanted to keep all of them in internet or some places mm -hmm. that people can see. Because um, <laughs> the problem with people like us who live in affluent society 
and who are not really starving because you did not advise to cook, but because you're lazy or because you did not want to get fat. <laughs> you know, these people are starving. They don't have food. They know the hardships. And um, something that you can learn from those people. What I learned from North Koreans was, in spite of everything, their spirit is so alive, really <laughs> alive. You know, they're not crushed. And uh, they don't really take you to private homes. They, they wouldn't allow it. So I begged my guide, please, let me see at least one family. And so you saw the family. Mm -hmm. That's where I went. But uh, most of the people I grabbed on the street, in the park. And so I think what you saw were really unpretending, not disguised, spontaneous, people who live in North Korea. Anything else? Yeah? Uh, when did you finish the film? Uh, you just completed it? Already? No. I finished in 19, 2014. 2014. Uh, 2015. I finished. Have you not shown the film anywhere? Huh? I showed the film everywhere. You know, I did not... Usually, I show my film on PBS. And uh, I wanted to see if PBS would put my film. Because they did it. I, I made a film about comfort women, Sakhalin Koreans, and the uh, LA riot, and all those things went nationally, sometimes internationally through PBS. So I wanted to see if they would put this on. But the uh, disadvantage of this was this was 90 minutes. They don't like 90 minutes. They want. 30, they, they like 30 minutes best so that they can cut 27 minutes and put all those useless, you know, PBS bundles and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but uh, 90 minutes, they did not, they would not want it. So at that point, I was so tired of begging people to beg to show my good film when they were showing such stupid films. I did not want to do it, so I said, okay, I can live without you. So I disregarded PBS, and uh, I started uh, going to the colleges and universities, college and university tour. I must have traveled about 100 colleges and universities. And the many universities have this, and they talk about this in the class. That's all. That's some of the strength of my film. They use in the classroom. Mm -hmm. they, they look at it and they discuss. Mm -hmm. So that's what they do with this film too. I, I actually saw that doing it when I went around. And so, yeah. Anything else? Yeah? I have two questions. I'd rather to start with your opinion on this. Do you, do you think your father made the correct decision to leave uh, the North? No! He <laughs> <laughs> should have lived in North Korea, but my father was, uh, he always prided in himself that he did not like socialism. He wanted democracy, and he loved America, you know? So I remember when I was little, my father always got up at 4 or 5 in the morning, and he was at at that time, grown up, adult, with kids, you know, there were eight of us, uh, we have you know, eight like children in our family, <laughs> and he, he, he would uh, get up that early and he would study English, so that uh, he can be with Americans who teach this really good thing called the democracy and freedom, and so he would not choose Russians. He wanted to live with Americans. So we had to follow him. But uh, I, I often think about what it would have been like if we didn't come to the South. And, and, and if Korea were to unite, huh? you think it would unite as a, as a North Korea model or a South Korea model? See, that's the problem. So people talk about we have to unite it. But um, it when it's divided, it's good to want to unite, but if South and North are united, then there will be real struggle, real fight, because 
South Koreans will say, these people don't know a thing. We have to teach them how to live, how to do this and that and that. And, and North Koreans, they would say, God, what do they know? <laughs> Nothing. We have to teach them equality, justice, socialism, all of that. So it would be a fight, you know? So I think, in my view, trying to unite as one country and hope for the peaceful one country is a little bit beyond. I can pick How up that issue. Huh? I can pick up that issue in my presentation. Pardon? I can pick up that issue in my presentation. Oh. She does not want me to say what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but who cares, okay? So anyhow, uh, but, uh, I think what we should do is North and South should just live, I mean, the freedom that I want is uh, freedom to communicate with each other, travel, you know? Mm -hmm. And well, we you use still have the... To war. I mean, that, that, I mean, that to, is a To have a peace treaty would be like the, the, the step toward what you want. Right. Yeah, so anyhow, you talked too much, and she said, <laughs> <laughs> all right, what else? I think I took, she, yeah, she took, she went to North Korea and took some, some, she took lots and lots of photos, and she wants to show all photos, to be fair, I think I should shut up and let it <laughs> And then afterwards, thank you very much. Korean division. It's the most heavily militarized zone in the world. 
a Y Korean soccer like this, you know, the North Korean, the South Korean, they have separate family, the divide family, numbered almost 10 million at the time before the war. So I'm a social activist. You know, I believe in social movement. I believe in the spirit of 1968 when the Americans stood up to against which kind of war in 1968? Vietnam. Yeah. Last year was 50 year anniversary of the huge anti-war movement in American civil history. Mm -hmm. You know, the death of Martin Luther King Jr., the death of Robert, King, Robert Kennedy. Mm -hmm. Last year marked the 50th anniversary, but nothing happened. Why? Why their social activism is so died away in America? Why Occupy Wall Street is going nowhere? Because there's no draft. <laughs> okay, so my motivation is how to make this Korea into this one. One whole unity with a you know, spirit of bright light, light and butterflies. Okay, this is the beginning of the history of Japan annexation. People believe that in 1910, Japan was officially annexed. But however, in 1905, there was Ulsa Joya. You know, the imperialists call it as Ulsa Boho Joya, pro protective treaty, but it's not. Uh, what it does is that the Japanese threatened the Korean emperor to enter <coughs> this document, the treaty, the Japanese envoy. Uh, here they say, Ilboni Han Hwang, Korean emperor, we help Taya. So at this 1905 treaty, Japan took away Korea's diplomatic right. 1905. And then finally, official annexed to you know, Japan, 1910, five years later. Okay? So these three men sent to where? Hey, to appeal this matter to the world, because there was a Paris Convention, Peace Convention, the three envoys from the Emperor Hojo went to the Hay to appeal to the world, hey, what Japan is doing to us is very unfair. We need peace. We need independence. But anybody listen to that appeal? No. No. There was a secret deal that Japan, you know, um, convinced the Russian emperor to block the entrance of these envoys. Nowhere. Nowhere to appear. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 1919. What happened in Korea? 1919? Yeah. The Declaration of Independence, Korea Independence Movement. So everybody went to the street and shout. Manse! Manse means what? March 1st. Independence. No, Manse that means independence. I mean Manse for independence. Oh, Manse for independence, okay. Manse means long live. Long live, yeah. Long live Korean independence. Mm -hmm. like that. So everybody, housewives, harmony, you know, half there, you know, kind of Ugandan type of, you know, young student, everybody yelling for Dehan Dongnik Manse. And this is what happened in 1910. So this year is how many years has passed? 100, 100 year anniversary of March 1st independence movement of Korea. And why this is important? Because of this massive grassroots effort. Even the Giseng. What is Giseng? Geisha. A geisha. You know. yeah. so even, even the Geisha people went to street to say Manse. And uh, but the result, the consequence was brutal, brutal persecution by the Japanese. Mm -hmm. So uh, the why March first is important? The total participant number is two million, two million. more than two million. Mm -hmm. And how many population of Korea at this time? Twenty million. Twenty million. Fifteen million. Twenty. Million. I counted that time. Oh, did really? you? Yeah. You can't see the time. Wow. <laughs> 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 Reverend Kim was uh, alive at the time. <laughs> okay. Two million people out of 20 mi million. 
So 10% of the population participated. Can you can you perceive how massive this is? Mm -hmm. About yeah. how big U.S. population these days? 300 million plus. 300 million, right? Yeah. Yeah. And think about the 10% of the population. Mm -hmm. huh? 30 million. Huh? 30 million. Yeah. So think about the 30 million American <laughs> people on screen. Can they change history? Can they change history? Sure. Can you change history? Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. Through my first movement, the Koreans proclaimed their independence all over the world. And what is important? Because this is peaceful, non-violence movement. And before the Japan annexation, there was a huge popular uprising called Donghak Dongmin Hongmyeong. People believed in Tonga, which is the main theme of Kim Dae Shil and Seng Min Myung People are the sky, you know. People are equal under heaven, you know. That's the basic principle of Tonga Eastern studies. So people believed in this ideology, the uprising against the uh, E Dynasty's authoritarian war, which is like uh, 1894 Tonga Hangmyeong, but at the time, Korean um, rulers made a really stupid decision. They couldn't handle this uprising. So they asked Qing Dynasty, send us some soldiers to help us to suppress this uprising. The Qing Dynasty sent the soldiers. Mm -hmm. And there was a treaty between Qing Dynasty and Japan. You know, no matter which country sends soldiers, the other countries can send soldiers. So Japan brought their troops to brutally, brutally persecute you know, those who participated in Tonga rebellion. So as a result, there is not much men, there is not much weapon, there is not much courage in Korean people to stood against the Japanese colonial rule. But but this is 1919, nine year after the Japan annexation, but they st stood up. They didn't have any weapon. They only had this flag, non-virus movement. This is very historical. This is very historical. And this year is very historical because we mark 100 year anniversary. And this is also historical because at that year, as a consequence of March 1st movement, there are a number of Korean independence you know, activists convening Shanghai in China to form Korean provisionally <coughs> government. They proclaimed Korea is republic. Mm -hmm. Korea is not king's country. And this person, mm -hmm. Can anybody recognize? Chang. Chang Ho. This this session today is arranged by Hong Sai Dan, New York. Who's belong to Hong Sai Dan, New York? Yay! Okay. Chang Ho was the great independence movement leader. She's one of the two. I didn't say that. Okay. And this provisional government was so poor. Because they were under, you know, Japanese, you know, um, spying all the time, so they had to move around Shanghai, Hangzhou, Jinjiang, Changsha, Guangzhou, you know, to Chongqing to avoid the Japanese um, surveillance. Move inside, 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 inside. So that's the last spot. The Korean provisional government held their office. But finally, Korea got. Oh, yeah. This before before you know getting to liberation. This is the raising fund for Korean provisional government fund from Korean Americans. Mm -hmm. yeah. Korean Americans at the time funded Korean provisional government, and this is the fund they sold at the time. So, so, I just want to have that picture. Uh -huh. You know what is the symbolic for? Because there uh -huh. was a mante in March 1st for independence. Uh -huh. The female students, they're helping and they say mante. Japanese uh, uh, 
uh, police uh, or military, they cutting on the right hand, hand. Yeah. and then after that they cutting on the left hand. And that's what it is. Yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. dramatic, you know, description. Why they are doing mindset and they're cutting the head. Right. They're cutting the hand, they're cutting the throat, whatever. <laughs> the Japanese police do. And this is the proof of this person donated 45 dollars or whatever mm -hmm. to the treasury of mm -hmm. Dehan Ningbu. Dehani Bubine is the, the independence movement body which existed in the U.S. And at the bottom it says, we shall leave our children, can anybody read it? We shall leave our children in them instead of a bitter, bitter and shameful inheritance. I really like this close. Yeah. But can we read it once again? We shall leave our children eternal freedom instead of bitter and shameful inheritance. That's the spirit. Oh, that's that's the spirit. The Korean American supported the Korean Free Digital Government, and Korean American was the backbone of the Korean independence movement. And this year, 100 anniversary. So, you know, at this his historical year, we should think about what we can do together. Okay. At the liberation, as soon as the liberation, Korea became divided. You know how how ridiculous the division occurred. The American soldiers, American command said, oh, this is 38 parallel, let's just cut a line. They didn't know, you know, how many people lived in this area. They didn't know whether the South Korean, North Koreans were already visiting each, each other. They didn't care about the family. So after three years, you know, the ROK and DPRK established. But during the Korean War, this is how much armories that, you know, that was used. The civilian uh, victim was more than four millions, and the number of bombs that they dropped in Korean Peninsula was about the quantity of the bombs that were used during the World War I, the total period of World War I. So at that time, Pyongyang was totally devastated. And this is the image that the four winning countries of World War II were planning to divide which country? Japan. Japan. Because Japan lost the war. Germany lost the war. So they divided German half, although they got reunited. So they were thinking about the four winning countries of World War II were working on the plan to divide this country, not us, not Korea. But why Korea? I mean, we should come from to the winning countries. Yeah. Uh, World War II, that Korean division is very unfair from the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why Korea should suffer instead of Japan, mm -hmm. who is yeah. still a war crime nation, yeah. who still not apologize mm -hmm. for the comfort woman, what happened to the forced labor. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many millions of people Japan forced to slave labor and sexual slavery? South Korean historians estimate 6.5 million people were forcibly taken for that purposes. So whatever, war draft, forced labor, sexual slavery, whatever, whatever. And North Korean historians, they believe that 8.5 million people were forcibly taken. And that's why there are so many Korean Japanese living in Japan, because they were taken as a forced labor, slave labor, but they couldn't go back. And the initial Korean American immigrants to America happened in 1903 because in order to avoid the Japan's, you know, um, increasing, you know, dominance over Korea, some people had to flee in order to get job. So they uh, ended up in Hawaii plantation in order to survive, and that's the beginning of the Korean American immigration to the U.S. Okay, think about the children, maybe at the age of five or six or seven, and this is parallel 38. Whether they were able to perceive that this parallel, this division, became so permanent so for, the, for the rest of their life, they were not able to cross. They were not able to see their 
family members, siblings, for 73 or 74 years. Most of the divided family members, they passed away. What a tragic. So in order to defeat this kind of unfair scheme of what happened during the Korean division, we need to think really, think out of the box. And if you see the Korean Peninsula in the right format, you always have to think about what Japan is going to do, what U.S. is going to do, what China is going to do, what Russia is going to do. But think about this way, upside down, Korean image upside down. And how does it look like? <laughs> yeah, I'll say down, but... Uh, uh, yeah, but Korea can be the center of moving into the ocean or to the continent. Yeah, very strategic. Very strategic. And Japan, maybe they protect Korea you know, against this you know, ocean. Whatever. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we need to really think upside down, think out of the box, in order to get away, you know, get, you know, this, um, always, the, um, there are always victim country, and the superpowers divide the victim country, the, the weakest. This is a policy of 19th century, 20th century international politics. What do you see? Divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. So Korea became the complete scapegoat of divide and conquer policies of the you know, superpowers, of the imperialist power, whatever. So think upside down. How do you defeat this divide and conquer? Mm -hmm. The image behind it, what do you see? What do you see? The image people behind the divided people country? People all coming together? Yeah. yeah. Different people. People coming together? Yeah. Hand in hand, mm -hmm. being united, mm -hmm. and embracing to each other, then we can defeat the scheme of divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. Still, divide and conquer is happening every day in our mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. the, the, those on top, making us to divide and conquer. I mean, men and women, you know, the wealthy and the poor, mm -hmm. they're constant conflict and constant confrontation because they want us to get divided and be conquered. Mm -hmm. But we shall not be conquered. Okay, so much. I mean, uh, this was just try to give you some kind of basic um, background. But let me show you some photographs of, you know, the cultural heritage of both Korea share. And this is Gyeonwoo Jingnyeo, uh, which is like Gyeonwoo Jingnyeo's young one for her. Gyeonwoo is a Gyeonwoo. What's it called? Carbon. Carbon. Oh, 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 the shepherd. Gyeonwoo yeah, yeah, yeah. shepherd. Yeah, yeah. And Jingnyeo is like a weaving. Weaving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they got separated, and because uh, yeah. they made the god, they made the god angry because they were not. Uh, they were dating too often and they were not fulfilling their own duties so they got as a punishment they got you know uh, separated one at the east and the east so they can only once a year you know and and the galaxy the galaxy uh, provide their um, the bridge the bridge for the two um, men and um, wife me but Kyunu Jingya is actually well, in Goguryeo dynasty, Chongping in Pyongyang. So the, uh, the North Korean ancestors, they believed in this love story. Mm -hmm. And you can see this when you go to Pyongyang. It, it is still available, but during my last visit, uh, I wanted to go to some kind of Goguryeo tomb painting, and my wife said, uh, frequent visit will harm those tomb paintings. So mm -hmm. now only the scholars with a special mission, can enter. So I wasn't able to see. And this is another uh, symbol of Sureb a, a god of wheel. And wheel is the wagon wheel. And the wagon meant the um, 
automobile these days mm -hmm. at the time. It's ancient, ancient history. I thought it's a Koguryo, which is the, the, the dynasty. And this tomb painting is about 400, you know, 500 years AD. So we share many cultural heritage. And, um, <laughs> there was three ancient kingdoms in Korean Peninsula, Goguryeo, Shilla, Baekje, three kingdom period. Mm -hmm. But the three kingdom period ended with Shilla, who unified the rest of the kingdom. But what, what Shilla did, they, Shilla brought Chinese, because Shilla was the weakest nation. Mm -hmm. So Shilla made alliance with the Chinese, and defeated the other two dynasties. So many, many uh, present Koreans denounced Shilla, or how could, you know, Shilla brought foreigners to defeat, you know, our own, you know, same ancestral nation. And North Koreans perceived that way particularly. North Koreans say, oh, we don't like Shilla, because it's the people who brought Wese, the foreign forces. To you know, to make the three kingdoms into one. However, when uh, Shilla people brought the Chinese, the Chinese said, "Hey, we're gonna rule Korea from now on. Shilla, you get rid of. You know, we're gonna create our own you know colonial government here." So what did Shilla just obey to the Chinese at the time? No, <laughs> Shilla fought against the Chinese. They went into the war, seven years war, to defeat the Chinese. So even Shilla, who's attacked by the, the lack of um, independence, by bringing the foreign forces, think about the president South Korean. Think about this, you know, um, I, uh, think about this assumption that, um, okay, South Koreans, U.S. Army, made alliance, and they defeated North Korea because they want to make the two countries into one, okay? And the U.S. versus say, hey, South Korea, you, you just walk away. We're going to rule the Korean Peninsula, you know, over all. We're going to have a council. You know. Then South Korea, can they be say, no way, we're going to get into a war of independence to, you know, to fight you back to the U.S.? It, would it be feasible? Would it be feasible mm -hmm. assumption? Pretty. Yeah. Not yeah. many people believe that South Korea will have a gut to say that U.S., you know, no, this is our country. Because the alliance between U.S. and South Korea is so intimate. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, after the liberation, the U.S. came over to Korea as a liberation army. So South Koreans, you know, welcome them. Hey, US, you know, they liberate us. But what the US did? They shoot. They shot those people. Because it's out of control. Mm -hmm. US came over to Korea as a occupation force, not a liberation force. Mm -hmm. And for three years, there was a US occupation, and then it laid the foundation to the separate political division, mm -hmm. the birth of South Korea and the birth of North Korea as a regime. So, so many, so many stories when you talk about uh, um, history, but I see so many you know, similarities between the two because this is South Koreans you know, hailing for the World Cup soccer game. And I see kind of similar you know, uh, energetic, you know, out first when I visited the uh, Arirang performance. This is North Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, the performer numbers are like 100,000. There are 100,000 performers in the stage, and this is also a card game. Mm -hmm. This number about 20,000, you know, card game players. Mm -hmm. That's a huge, huge performance. Mm -hmm. Maybe some people mm -hmm. criticize this kind of, you know, um, socialist. Um, mobilization of people. 
but uh, they truly believe in it. They, they love their country. They love their country, so they don't want to be defeated by whatever scheme that you know, the U.S. is making. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, the story of Dangun, which is the, the South Korea, North Korea share as a you know, same ancestor. Uh, 하늘에서 이렇게 3천 명이 가시 내려오고. Actually, this is a cartoon read by North Korean kids. This is a cartoon that I picked up in North Korea. This is. And think about the Korean letters. Think about the stories. It's exactly the same as South Korean beliefs. 환우. 어, 호랑이하고 곰이 서로 사람이 되고 싶다고 해요. 그래서 환웅이 쑥하고 마늘을 먹고 한 달을 버티라고 그래. Yeah. 근데 곰은 쑥하고 마늘을 옹호로 걸 먹는데 누구는 못 참고 뛰쳐나갔어요? 호랑이는 못 참고 뛰쳐나갔어요. 그래서 곰이 곰이 여자로 변해서 이 환웅하고 결혼을 해서 낳은 아이가 단군인데 단군 is the uh, Korean national you know, founder. 아, 여, 여기 보면은 이거 가르쳐줘요. 여기 노스코리아에서 단군 신화는 왜냐면 South Korea believe this is a myth, not a historical fact. But this is North Korean interpretation. 단군 신화의 곰과 범 이야기는 한용이 거느린 종족, tribe, tribe에 곰과 범을 숭배한 tribe가 있었고 그 가운데서 집의 시족인 곰 시족 족장의 딸이 한용과 결혼한 사실을 신비롭게 표현한 것입니다. Can somebody understand this? You, you said you're learning Korean. <laughs> Any, anyway, this is a story when the uh, bear tribe and you know a tiger tribe, you know they were in a kind of um, battle. But uh, you know after the war, the bear tribe, you know, made the victory. So uh, the bear tribe's um, daughter got married to this Hano, who you know came down from heaven. 그래가지고 단군 단군이 태어나서 단군이 태어나서 이제 나라를 세우고 조선이라고 부르자 한게그 고조선 that's the first kingdom of Korean Peninsula which happened like a five thousand years ago. 근데 이거를 South Korea는 myth라고 가르쳐요. Historical fact가 아니라고 가르쳐. But we share the same national father, you know, who's 단군. So this can be a really um, Um, me, mitigated story, mitigation between the two countries because this is year 2014, even during the Park Geun-hye you know, administration, North Korea and South Korea held Gaechonjeol. Gaechonjeol is the Korean National Foundation Day. Mm -hmm. They held the Korean National Foundation Day celebration together in Pyongyang. Mm -hmm. How many years into this year? 4,000. No, you do calculation. You have to add the two immediately, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Reverend King, you know. The Goguryeo Chungpingi woman, like, in there, can be the hand, grand figure that you buy now. This is a modern interpretation of Painter Kim Bong Jun by Goguryeo Sa. And at the Arirang performance, this is another performance of Namukgun, Sonyeowa Namukgun. Sonyeowa Namukgun is performed by North Korean. And it's a nice scene, so when my camera did this, it looked like a picture, but this is actual people. And they uh, even um, had a presentation of Gunggangsan waterfall and the Gunggang's beautiful mountain. And Sonyeo, Sonyeo, what is it? Fairies? The fairies? And Sonia is in a dance to celebrate this marriage between Sonia uh, and Namukun. So this story is being shared by both North Korea and South Korea. And 
and this, this is a uh, North Korean fairy table. Namo kuni, namo hadaga, mogi apogadu, kitchen of an in there, Sanyora Tanagadu, Toraji Possil Kishutani, Toraji Possil Tadabogatini, Mogi Tadata, Mogangaya. Kunganga, the Kunganga, Sanyora, Natanagadu, the Toraji Purishmansa, Chiman, the Toraji Purishman. Oh, 기침이나 가래를 사귀고 가라. 기침이나 가래를 사귀고 원기를 돕고는데. 비스이제나 가르쳐주면 Does anybody know the story? 낭낭공주 호동왕이다. 오케이. 시간이 없으니까 뭐. 오케이. This is a 동화, rebellion that I talked about. Yeah. In 1994. Against the foreign forces, against um, feudalism. And this is the person who founded the 동화, you know, philosophy as a religion. And what 동화 people believe is that uh, every man, woman are equal and they are the owners of the world. So people are the sky, the same as the shares, you know, a theme of the film, but they actually believe Igozezanan Hexani Twin. Every one of us is the owners of your life, not only your life, but the whole country. And at that time, how the noble, noble class A, mm -hmm. at the time of Tongan Rebellion, and how the common people A, mm -hmm. you know, the big difference of Pakistan. Okay, so much, so much. Uh, there's uh, um, many feminism against the beauty contest, right? Mm -hmm. But I believe in beauty contest <laughs> in terms of. <laughs> Koreans put some specific, you know, very unique notion. Because we do not list them as first runner up, second runner up, third runner up. We put uh, beauty peasant Jin Sun Mi, which is the, the best represent truth, and the second place represent goodness, sun. The third place represent beauty. So if you are just pretty, then it's just third place, you beauty contest. <laughs> Okay, there are so many to show, and maybe I can come back at later, you know, whatever time that is appropriate to KCC to show the most recent, you know, photograph, photograph that I took during the North Korean trip. But this is the historical perspective, and I uh, hope that, you know, it serves as some kind of a just perspective for the people in Korea. It doesn't matter whether you are North Korean or South Korean.